Hey, it's Jesus, and I want to go over Card. Card is my favorite landing, and yeah, easy to launch, easy to do everything. Uh, so, Card.co, C A R R D.co. I'll put the links over here, and then you can either choose a starting point. So, if you click this button, Card has a bunch of templates that you can use. Um, well, this is mine, but then there are a bunch of templates. Some are pro, some are free, uh, or you can start from a blank canvas. I just want to show you card pricing. Be here no. So card is very cheap. It starts at $19 per year uh, and then there are other options for in order to do more things so for $19 a year you can set up your domain uh, set up forms embed this we're gonna cover this tribe and PayPal subscriptions um, and then you can publish more sites Boom, here we are so 19 custom domain which is what we want and we also want to embed uh, and widgets which are the stripe and paypal options and then you can also have the pro plus that has extra features custom templates uh, redirects advanced settings anyway when you open card you get here right i have a bunch of uh, websites here I have my settings, so my my details, my plan, my activity, uh, and here I have my websites, my sites. Okay, so I can create a new site from scratch, or I can use a template. In this case, we're gonna use this template. So, very simple. When you get here, the actual the, the website is already built. So the only thing you have to do is click and put in the app put in the, on the website, on the landing page, your material, your words, your images, your screenshots, you should already have that from the workbook. And then it's just personalizing the website. So as you can see, it's a huge container. So card is built using containers. So think of, of, of card as a drag and drop editor. And then, so you can, drag and drop a bunch of things. If I click the plus sign here, these are all the components that we have. Just like in Glide, we have different components for like text and images and, and other things. In Card, it's exactly the same. So we have text, images, buttons. Now, every time you add a new component, it goes to the button up, bottom of the page, like here. And then you can uh, move this text component, and then I can put it anywhere I want here right so in this case you would just click here and start changing the words in the different components click done so for um, text you click the text and then you add the text right here so each component at least text components have these three settings the actual text the appearance and the settings so I'm not going to get into the settings but for appearance in this case we have this black text and this we have this purple text so you can change the color again using the hex code using the slider change the font the size of the of the font the weight so heavier or uh, lighter spacing the margins the appearance the alignment and then a very cool thing is that CAR already provides a mobile uh, layout. So CAR sites are fully responsive. That means if I click this button, I will preview my website in a phone, right? in a mobile device. If I want to change the settings for this text component, so right now, this is the, the, the desktop version and this is the mobile version. And then here I'm in my text component on this first text component. 
and the mobile layout has an auto. So card by itself figures things out. But if you want to change that, then you can click manual here and then change the settings for when users are opening your website in a mobile device. Uh, so by default, card will try to find the best way to format your data. But if you don't want how it looks, you can change it here as well. So we have all of our text components that you just click and edit them here in the A. And then we have our image components that the only thing you have to do is click upload and replace the image that we have here for the image that you want to use. And that's it. We have a button here. Uh, let's say you wanted to add another button. So you would click here, get started, download app then the icon will be do we have an app um, hello then i can have app my domain dot com right so get started download app so you can have as many buttons as you want um, let's say you want to add a logo your logo up here so i would click add i would click image then this is the image component. I have to drag and drop it all the way to the top. Let's put it here. And then upload. Let's say this is my logo. Right, so I can um, crop the image. So let's do that. And I can change the settings. So it's super high. I want to make it super flat. So this will be my logo, right? Then I can add margins to it. Uh, then again, I can configure the mobile version if I want to see how it looks in mobile. Then it looks like this. This would be my logo. If I don't like how it looks in my mobile, I click manual and then I can edit that here as well. Otherwise, I just leave it like this. So let's go back to layout. So here you would replace that the logos of your client, like who's using your app, uh, what your app, what does your app do? Uh, so you have the header and the subtitle text, and then ideally you will have like these three bullet points regarding what your app does. Uh, so your app makes CDC for doctors to spend more time with their patients. So number one, uh, save money. Number two. Uh, have a better life, number three, right? So in this case, if we look at this, call, uh, this um, container, it's a columns style container and it has three columns, right? So you can see here, each column is 33, the second is 34% and the final one is 33%. Let's say I just have two bullet points. So I will delete one and then 50 50 and then i can delete so let's click done let's say i don't want this image i don't want this text or this text right so my app does help doctors book more patients and save money so two bullet points so you can edit the container any way you want i can backtrack my steps here click on the back button that's it show how your app works so in this case we have an image but we could have like maybe a video right so let's click video and then i would upload the video here or i can embed the video here and then we can embed youtube videos so let's actually do that let's find a youtube video we have this video of mine here we go we glide so let's copy and paste the video and then you can you have a bunch of options uh, let's autoplay loop the video and then show the controls sure and then you can even change the starting time so in this case the video is here it's not loading yet uh, but when we preview the website we would be able to see I would have to save and open the, the website in a new tab. 
let's do that right now. We're coming back to the save button later. Oh, actually, I have to publish this. Publish to card. Let's see, is it available? Yes. So right now I'm using this card subdomain, just like in Glide, you have whatever.glideapp.io. In this case, I have whatever.card.co, right? And then you can see the video is here. It already started playing, right? So it's very easy to, let's go back, to add videos here. Look, let's say instead of this image, you want to have a video, you would just add, as I did, the video component. Um, I can delete this now. And then again, we are reinforcing what does your app do, how does it help, help your clients. Show how your app works. So again, we have another image. You could have a video, you could have a, maybe a gallery. Uh, you can have a table, you can have a slideshow of, of um, screenshots. So a slideshow looks like a great idea. Let's put that over here. I will delete this for now. Then slideshow, so I can upload a bunch of images. I have here a couple. So let's say I have, let's just do the app. There we go. Um, then we can add a new one, upload here. I choose this image and I am going, ideally they will all be the same size in my case, apparently they won't. But when you take screenshots of your app, they will look the same. They will be the same size, ideally. Set. Done. So we have our three images here, as you can see. We have the transition, like crossfade. Uh, there's a delay, six seconds. You can change this, the duration. Um, and then you can change the size. So let's make this taller, like this. Right, so I'm going to save, publish those changes, and let's go see the site. Refresh. So every six seconds, the image will change, right? Uh, so you can have like this slideshow, a gallery, a bunch of other features. Let's go back. Let's delete all the changes that I did to the template. There we go. Delete this slideshow. Delete. Then we have your call to action. Here, the call to action would be subscribe, download the app, uh, get in touch with us, book a Calendly meeting, uh, set up an appointment so I can show you the app. So you would change that here. And then you can configure these buttons. So buttons are very easy. You just click here. You can change the label, change the icon and the URL. So maybe this would be your Calendly, right? HTTPS calendly.com slash. This is my Calendly, right? And I can have, um, I can add another button, email, Maybe I want people to email me right away. So mail to asus at google.com. Then email me. Right. So you can set up your buttons here. You can also set up a form. So let's add a form. Let's move it up here. So let's delete the email button. And we have a form. So let's add a title here. So for this button, let's actually for this component, I 
takes out more space. Mm, margin. So we can edit the form type. It's a contact form, but it could be a sign up form. And then you can connect your MailChimp. It can be a custom form. I'm pretty sure these settings are because I have the, the 90 or $50 a month plan. Uh, but for sure, the contact form is available in, even in the cheapest one. So you have either receiving email. So this will be your email at your domain. Car can filter messages for spam. And then you can display a message here. And then here we can edit. So in this case, we have name, email, and message. But you could have asked users for a phone number and make it like a required field or not for a subject uh, for consent. So they would have to uh, accept how the information will be used, etc. And then we have the button here, so it's called submit. And you'll send the message. I'm not going to do the, the Stripe thing on this video. And then um, change the how the form looks. So I don't like how it looks black. I want to make it white. So the outline will be 100% white. The text looks fine. Or we can change it to white as well. That looks better. Right. Then we have our footer. So we click the button here. It has our social media links. You click each and then you change the link to your URLs. If you don't have, let's say, YouTube, you just click the trash thing. Uh, then we have an email here. And then we have your copyright. When you're done, you click the Save button, and then you will do a bunch of things here. First, you will name your website. So my website, right? Then the description, then the action. When your website is ready, you will publish to a custom domain, and the domain will be mywebsite.com, right? You should have bought your custom domain by now. And you would have to add a couple, actually three DNS records. Just like in Glide, you'll do the same for your own custom domain in Glide, and you have to do the same here. So you can click this button and it'll point you to the instructions how to configure that. Uh, you will add two A records and a C name record. Usually, if your domain provider is uh, giving you a website or a website builder, probably they already have some A or C name domains for the www and A records for the at host. If they do delete those DNS records as well and then add these ones. For now we can publish it to a card custom domain anywhere we want and then we publish changes. The other thing that we want to do is you can share image so you can when you share your website it will load like a screenshot of your website or if you don't want that you can upload maybe your logo or something else as an image and then you can also upload the icon so that it will look nice when you open this in a new tab and then settings your language your meta tags uh, you can set up a password for your website if you don't want people to access the website or you're not ready to share this publicly the update frequency auto and then exactly the same as Glide, you can set up a Google Analytics account in Google and then put a tracking ID here. And when you do that, you'll be able to see how many people are coming into your website, where are they coming from, what are they searching on Google, and how do they find you, and a lot of other features. And then publish changes, and it goes live. You can view the site that I just published. So it's a very simple setup. You will just be replacing text and images for whatever you have in your workbook um, and get it published. So I hope this works. If you have questions, please let us know and we'll help you with your website. Have a great day.